Hi everyone, welcome back to our fishing lakes apiary. We're here actually to carry out an inspection on our top bar hive, which uh, we're going to transfer at some point from the top bar hive into uh, a nucleus box, maybe a full size hive if it's big enough by that time. But I think what we're gonna do is a kind of shook swarm. So we'll show you that video uh, another time. Uh, that will probably be posted to our Patreon page, so have a look at that. If, uh, if you'd like to catch up on all the other videos as well, then our Patreon page is the place to go to. But today we're just going to carry out a, a straightforward inspection on the Top Bar Hive. And for those of you that are new to Top Bar Hives, there's a particular way of holding the Top Bars so that the comb doesn't fall off, and, and that was really what I wanted to uh, demonstrate to you today. But <clears throat> those of you that follow uh, my channel and uh, also uh, are on our Facebook group and our Patreon page may also be aware that I host a weekly podcast uh, called Beekeeping Short and Sweet. And it's only a very short podcast, lasts about 15 minutes on average. And uh, I try to cover off lots of tips and techniques on there, but also detail uh, our beekeeping journey this year, uh, which we're hoping to um, complement with some videos as we go through this season. But the podcast is actually sponsored in part by a UK company called Simon the Beekeeper, who uh, very kindly have been supporting our podcast for some time now. The very nice people at Simon the Beekeeper have sent me uh, a new jacket to try out. Uh, this is their uh, Buzz Workwear Professional Khaki Jacket. It's an off-the-peg uh, bee jacket. Uh, it comes with the, the traditional uh, fencing veil type veil and I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, we've been using the uh, Simon the Beekeeper bee suits for uh, at least one full season if not longer now and I find the actual bee suits, the full length overall type bee suits perfectly fine. They work really well uh, and I guess the big attraction is that they're very affordable. Uh, if you go on to uh, the Simon the Beekeeper website and have a look at the prices and compare them to uh, other companies, uh, you're looking at probably a third of the price for a, an awful lot uh, of uh, their products, the bee suits and the bee jackets. I'll pop a link in the description beneath the video so you can just click across and, and take a look at that. So what do you get with the, the jacket? Well, you get two hoods for a start. It is just a fairly standard um, bee jacket. Uh, this is a, a large, I'm six foot three, dare I say almost 200 pounds. So it gives you an idea as to quite how uh, it, it fits. Nice construction. Uh, it's a good heavyweight cotton material. Four pockets, all Velcroed. Got my glasses, I'm always forgetting my glasses, so it's always handy to have, have the pockets. Phone in the top pocket. One thing I do like about these is that they have a little clip for keys so that I'm always either leaving the keys in the cab uh, or I take them with me but then put them down somewhere. Um, so it's nice to have something that you can hook them onto because if you're in a field somewhere inspecting your bees and they fall out of a pocket then you could spend an awful long time looking for them. I'm sure all of you have seen the features that you get with bee jackets and bee suits. Uh, the usual um, thumb loop and Velcro wristband to pull it in nice and tight. If you're wearing gloves then the thumb loop will stop the sleeve from riding up too far. Uh, you can pull them in nice and tight. so. If you wanted to, you could overlap, and that holds it in really tightly. Uh, for me, I find just the standard kind of Velcro length works really well. And of course, the all important bit is the little 
uh, elasticated waist. So with a bee suit, you're obviously wearing a full length bee suit, so a boiler suit all the way down to your ankles. As you can see, I'm wearing wellies, so the bee suit goes into the wellies. Now, if you're not wearing a bee suit, you're just wearing a jacket, uh, a pair of sturdy uh, jeans, but you've obviously got gaps where the bees could potentially crawl up. So, uh, the bee jacket comes with a really nice elasticated waist which you can pull in tight get it fitting nice and tightly all the way around and then pop the little toggle and pull it through so that it locks it in place and then tuck that up underneath now it's nice and tight around your waist around your behind so that the bees are not going to crawl up and get inside the bee suit so that's pretty much it. The veil itself is well made, there's plenty of room, uh, standard fencing veil. If I zip it up you'll see how it fits. You've got plenty of room so that when you're looking down into the beehive it's going to fall away from your face so it's not sitting on your face. And the great thing is, as I said, you get two of these, so if you should happen to damage one, you've got a second one. Velcro tab at the top, so that you can feel very secure, and you're good to go. The only thing I would say, that because it's an off-the-shelf jacket, is that the zip comes up quite high, and this is the same on the, the suits as well. So if you're bending down, it can get a bit tight around the neck. So all I do is just loosen the zip off a little bit so that it's down around the Velcro point so that when you're inspecting and you bend forward, it's not going to be too tight on your neck. So let's go through. Uh, we'll get the smoker lit, keep the, this jacket on, and we'll go and have a look at the top bar hive and I can show you the jacket in action. So here we are at the top bar hive, just give them a little bit of smoke. Uh, the top bar hive has done remarkably well. Uh, we've overwintered a very small colony in here and they've expanded really quite rapidly. So with the, um, the new jacket on, we'll just uh, get into them and see how they've performed. So for those of you that haven't seen a top bar hive before, it's basically a series of top bars, hence the name, and the bees draw the comb down from that top bar. So <clears throat> we'll give them some smoke. It's not a traditional uh, frame in that it has a rectangular shape to it. Um, it's just a top bar. So let's see if we can take one of these top bars out and show you exactly what I mean. So uh, this one is right on the very edge and you can probably see uh, that the bees are drawing the comb down and that we've got uh, some drone brood on the side facing the camera. So that's looking quite good. So I'll just move that out of the way. And that gives us a little bit more room to be able to uh, carry out our inspection. And the trick with the, uh, with the top bar hive really is knowing how to handle the top bars. Because there's no side support, if you turn it so that the weight is taken on the top section of the uh, top bar, then the comb will just break off. So you have to hold it in such a way as to not put that sidewards pressure on, on the frame. So as long as you turn it and twist it and not rotate the top bar, you can actually look at both sides quite easily uh, without any problem at all. Uh, one of the things that I find uh, with these top bars is that 
I need to mark the top bar because of the manipulation, the way you move that top bar. I like to just put a mark on one edge of the top bar so that I can put it back in in the right way. Top bars sometimes will be a little bit more wavy, not quite as straight as uh, a traditional frame. And so uh, if you don't put it back in in exactly the same way, then uh, what you can find is that the, the comb will push against each other uh, on the top bars and you'll end up either damaging bees, killing bees or making a mess of the comb. So we can carry out the inspection quite easily just by turning and twisting the top bar. We've got lots of really nice looking brood here. Now we're going to move this colony into a, uh, a normal, what I would call a, a normal hive. Uh, and we're actually going to use this top bar hive at our local association apiary that we're just setting up just to give everybody a chance to see a different type of, of hive. Now we've had this going for a couple of seasons now and um, if you're looking to produce lots of honey then I would suggest that this isn't really the type of hive to go for. We've not yet taken any honey off them but you can see the, the structure of the comb it's absolutely fantastic and the bees are doing really nicely in this hive. So all I'm really looking for is queen cells at the moment. I just want to make sure that they don't swarm. One of the things that these um, top bar hives are prone to is the bees actually drawing comb down and sticking it to the side walls. Uh, but what I found is that if they get a good base along the top, they tend to only stick it to the side walls just at the top. They don't seem to use uh, the comb lower down to pin it to the side wall. So uh, another really good looking comb, and we do have the start of some queen cells here, uh, rudimentary queen cups, uh, and one of them's got an egg in it, so I'm just going to squash that and take it out. It's actually quite cool today, so it gives the Simon the Beekeeper jacket a good test. So um, hopefully it's going to work out okay. I don't normally wear a jacket, I have to say. I normally wear uh, an all-in-one bee suit, uh, but actually this summer I think if it's particularly warm, as it does get sometimes, I might well just switch to the jacket. I don't think I'd be so brave as to wear shorts, but um, I'd certainly go with it uh, with jeans. It's, yeah, it's a, a perfectly functional bee jacket. It works really well. I feel like I've got plenty of room in it. I can't see any queen cells on this one. So it's, it's actually quite a comfortable uh, jacket and I guess it's even more comfortable when you consider that uh, your bank balance is going to benefit um, because they are literally a third of the price of some other jackets that I've seen out there. Of course it's horses for courses. You've got the freedom to choose and if you wanted to get something more bespoke then you can get custom made jackets. Again just notice the way that I'm turning this top bar in order to keep the weight away from putting too much pressure on that comb. Mm. Haven't seen any more queen cells as yet. You can see that the bees are, have drawn this comb out really well. It looks fantastic. It's a really nice shape fits in to this particular hive really well and if you struggle to lift heavy weights then a long hive or a top bar hive would be 
at the perfect hive for you. Uh, as some of you will know, I struggle with a bit of a bad back problem. Touch wood hasn't been so much of an issue recently, uh, but if you do struggle with a, a back issue, then this is uh, really is a delight to, to use. So on this frame, top bar, we have our queen just wandering around. What's really nice is that they've got a really thick seam of honey and nectar around the top and that will be used to feed the, the colony when uh, the spring flow falls away. So really nice good thick seam of, of honey there. And we may well find ourselves with the, something called a June gap this year and that's where the, uh, the forage really drops off and we have a, a period where the spring flowering plants and trees have stopped flowering. They're no longer providing any nectar or pollen and we're kind of waiting for those summer flowering plants to come into flower and for the bees to, to then forage on. And uh, here in the UK we call that the June Gap. Sometimes we get it, sometimes we don't. Uh, sometimes it will hit some parts of the country and not others. So it's a little bit hit and miss as to where uh, it might actually happen. So this is a relatively new top bar that we've put in. And you can probably see that it's three sections here. And that's where they've drawn it down in three separate sections and connected them as they've continued to develop the comb. And so we come to the last top bar. And then this end bar with the pink paint on the top is um, called a follower board or a division board. And we can move that across a little bit further. And I'll show you how we add an additional frame additional top bar. I keep saying frame, we've got lots of hives with frames, these are just top bars. So they're filling this top bar comb with stores and when it's this size you can turn it on its side and the weight of it isn't going to break it off. As soon as it gets loaded with a bit more uh, nectar and honey it will become too heavy and it will just collapse off. So I would recommend that you just continue to twist and turn and spin rather than use it in that kind of twisting fashion. So quite a lot of bees here. One of the issues I find with the top bar hive is just trying to clear the bees away from the top bar so that we can close it up without crushing bees. That's always been an issue. So we must remember we've got our, our wedge, our top bar wedge from the start, but we can come across and find, see if we can find one that's already been partially drawn, and we can add that back in. So here's one that we've cut away some of the old comb, so this would have been one that we cut back after the winter because it was perhaps mouldy. So we can pop that in quite simply against the last particular one that we've got here and then we can move them all back again. One of the easiest ways uh, is to just keep everything shut that way, inspect from this follower board forward and then you can just move things back across. Because I don't use the um, top bar hive very often, we sometimes go at it slightly differently. So that would fit in against there and then you've got it shut again. But we need to put this uh, first wedge back. So we'll just bring these all back and I'm going to slide three or four at the same time so that we're not having to move one bar at the time and end up crushing lots of bees. Just got 
1B. Of course, as soon as you open the gap to let one bee out, then another bee gets caught in there. So here's our, our first original wedge, top bar. I call it a wedge because we've, we've put some angled wedge uh, wood as a starter strip on the top bar. And that seems to help an awful lot in getting the bees to pull the wax down nice and nice and square. So move this across, avoiding crushing bees. Same again here, one or two there. It has turned quite chilly, so um, bees are not the friendliest. But I have to say the jacket is working really well. Um, I, I don't feel at all vulnerable. Um, having worn suits for most of the time, I did think that it might feel a little bit, um, I might feel a little bit vulnerable, but actually it's, it's perfectly fine. So who knows, we might be able to wear it all, all summer. So there we go, there's our inspection. Remember, Simon the Beekeeper, take a look at their website. The link is below in the description and uh, just check out some of their equipment because it's really well made, it's very affordable and if you're beekeeping on a budget then it's very much worth visiting to see what other equipment they've got. That's it for today, we'll catch up next time but for now thanks for watching.